Hey, we're live. Welcome to comics, comics and coffee. I'm DJ Kaufman, cartoonist here at the friends working on the daily comic strip here live for a couple hours. And, um, thanks for joining in. We're going to take a look at some of the comics from the past couple of days. It's been a while since I've been on live on all the channels here talk a little bit about being up in New York last week, meeting a lot of the V fam up there. So this was Sunday's comic strip. Actually, let's go back to Saturday's comic strip. It's like a kind of a silly one. I actually drew this one during the earthquake <laughs> that was going on or finishing it up in the airport <laughs> with the, with the uh, crazy earthquake that we had up in New York. I didn't feel it, but yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so it's Duck. That's my name. Why are you on the ground? Set up. Splat. By the way, there's a great animation of this on uh, Twitter or on X. <laughs> Mike, how's it going? Did you feel the earthquake up there? I was in Penn Station get hopping a train and uh, didn't feel it, but <laughs> crazy man what a crazy trip <laughs> so that was Saturdays we got Sundays was the Crossroads comic it's a pretty big one appreciate you guys reading the comics and commenting and sharing uh, your thoughts on the characters and the situations and things so intuitive iguana shows up to save this lady help her make a decision she wants to form a band. Here, this last panel was kind of that classic meme of the car veering off the road, right? It's kind of fun. Kind of toying with memes and things lately. Oh, I don't have a, um, I don't have a pencil topper. Let's, uh, let's find one. Let's get that going. Looks like I've got a... I don't want bad intentions. But i got a passionate parent here. Let me stick him on the pencil. So we're, we're official. Yay. There we go. Cool. Awesome. So back to that. Monday's comic was... So it's... Um, Stun Sun Week. And of course, we had the eclipse going down on uh, Monday. And uh, I went with the joke of the bat. Someone else mentioned this on Twitter, too, because I was like, I don't know. We have the bold AF bat. And he's always with a moon. So I was like, we've got a moon and a sun. Let's put that together. And so the, the bat's kind of pushing the moon. Um, uh, in the way and then we have here the cat's not wearing his glasses <laughs> he can't see anything did you guys do that did you look at the did you like take the glasses off and like look and then look again at the sun <laughs> stupid where are your eclipse glasses and he's like what glasses i don't need no glasses i'm pretty proud of the cancel sun symbol too just want to say um, and just this silly, you know, my time has come like this darkness, the bat in front of it, like, trying to look spooky and the cat can't see anything now. So, Hey, Joanna, how are you? It was nice meeting you up there in um, New York. Yeah. I did a couple of those, um, special cards, you know, when we're on the stream here, I told everybody that. If I, if I met you, if I talked to you up there, I have something special for you at the secret wine party. So um, I'll do some more of that, I'm sure, as well. Let me do the complaining Carl strip. From all the way up here, our problem seems so small. That's fun. And then Perspective Pigeon is like, if I told you this, 
I've been telling you this for years. It took a space tour for you to finally see it. And he's like, I swear, I'm, you're right, Perspective Pigeon. I get it now, really. But I can't connect to the Wi-Fi up here. This is the worst. And they're like, Carl. <laughs> Carl. And then let's talk about today's comic. So it's a little bit of a, it's funny on itself, but you know, on its own, but I'm going to kind of explain it. There's some stuff going down in the hip hop land with um, J. Cole dropping a diss track on uh, Kendrick Lamar and then apologizing for it. So we have the Flexing Fox here dropping a diss track on the sun. <laughs> and then I, the sun is dumb. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And I kind of use the quote from J. Cole here. It's like, I'm sorry, son. I was just trying to get my music out there. And then I moved in a way that feels spiritually bad on me. And like, son's kind of just, son doesn't have hands. So like, he's just magically floating the tape near where he would have a hand. Maybe he has invisible hands. Who knows? And then uh, he's like, wow. And then he's like, I am honestly stunned by you right now. And he's like, my, at my apology? And he's like, no, because I had no idea you could rap. And he's like, is that a diss? <laughs> so pretty proud of that one. <laughs> kind of came out of the blue. Andy threw that. He's like, hey, man, did you know that this was going on in like pop culture? And I did. Oh, hey, look, I can go live on Instagram. Sweet. The button appeared. Guys, you don't know, like, hello, Instagram. Sometimes the button is a little tricky and it doesn't show up, but it, it turns blue and then you got to push go live. And there we go. So now I'm on live on TikTok. Hello, TikTok. People on TikTok. Let's see. Got to get my TikTok chat open. Sorry, I don't have that open. Sweet Corso's over in the chats. Morning Corso. Getting set up here. I'm gonna draw for a little bit. Got a little I got a lot to draw always, but you know, I don't think I have any um, you know meetings to get to, so maybe we'll go a little bit longer today. I don't know. Let's see. I also don't want to spoil too many things for you, but work on this one a little bit today. Just gonna go to this view here. Over on TikTok and Instagram, you can kind of, um, well, Instagram does get all the, all the views too. So TikTok's a little limited, but we, um, if you're new to V friends and you're watching before I get into this, V friends is over 180 or 280 sorry over 280 characters created by gary vaynerchuk you can explore all those characters on the website they all have different traits like courageous cockatoo here and consider a cowboy there's merch you can buy we got the nfts the digital collectibles it's awesome burn island where you can like technically throw your characters in the volcano and get things Um, I promise you they're okay though. Like, they survive. But all your characters are here. If you click the all characters button, then you're able to see um, when all the characters. So let's go to Ambitious Angel right here. And click on her character profile. Did I click it? Yes. My internet's a little bit slow. So when you click the character profile, Maybe, maybe we'll have to come back to it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Let's try alert eight. There we go. So when you click a character profile, and then there's a comic corner now that shows you all the comics that they're tagged in. When you click that, you can now share the comics or kind of use the next and previous buttons to go through all of our archives. You can download the comic if you want. There's a lot of people doing animations and just 
you know, print it out for yourself or whatnot. You can hit the share button and share it. And um, when you click the comic corner up here, now you can see the complete archives of the comics on the website. So that's pretty cool. A lot of people ask, how do you see the comics? That's how you do it now. And of course, every day on social, on all of our social channels. So I appreciate you guys watching and hanging out. I hope you're having a good day. Um, I hope you have a good day. You're just starting your day or a couple of our friends are over in the UK and they're already midday, right? Six hours or so ahead of us. Oh, my friends over in Europe. I know we always have Steve watching from Ireland. Um, but yeah, last week I was up there in uh, New York all week, you know, working on the comic strip and had some fun meetings with Gary and the gang. We got some other fun stuff happening. I can't talk about any of it. Sorry, but I, I, I will tell you that it's fun to be on those moon bug meetings. I get to see like, I'm just kind of in awe of, of other people's talents too. A lot of the times, like when I see the animators, um, character designs, I can't wait for you guys to see that stuff. It's really fun. Really fun. I think, I think kids are going to like it. And I think that parents are also going to like it. And, uh, we're re really happy with it so far. So that's your, that's your uh, moon bug update. <laughs> that's as, that's as much as I could say, but the scripts are all looking good and had some laughs with that. And, I can only talk about other things whenever they come out. So, you know, stay tuned real soon. Um, there's going to be some fun stuff to talk about for comics and stuff. I think, you know, things that I'm more involved with. I think that's, that's all I can say. I'll shut up now. I'll shut up. <laughs> But yeah, it was nice uh, going to the um, the secret wine party last week. Um, and uh, it was, you know, I'll talk through that a little bit. It's a little first time I've been like officially amongst the crowd of, you know, hardcore gift goats and collectors, you know, fans and and um, the energy, of course, is just great. But, you know, walking in there, I'm used to being, like, anonymous. And not, you know, seen as much, I guess. So, like, walking right in and having people just be like, DJ! And I was like, I don't know, I don't know your names. Like, I know your usernames and stuff like that. And I feel bad because I'm like, man, I don't know what to do. You know? Like, I'm like, well, thank you. Thank you for... But it's it's nice to 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 get to know start to get to know everybody and um, you know Joe Animal Joe Animal's in the uh, drawing club too and a few of you are in the drawing club too so that's nice Dan hey what's up we sent been doing some amazing animations too but again I'm pretty much in awe like whenever I see somebody doing things like that especially with something that I that I drew. It's pretty cool to see like that it inspired, um, you know, it inspired you to, to do that. I can't wait. There's going to be so much cool stuff in a lot of so many ways. We're just getting started with uh, the comics and we're really getting into a rhythm, you know, behind the scenes and I'm always feeling good about it. You know, like I'm always, I, I love waking up every day and working on the comic strips and sometimes, you know, staying up late and working on the comic strips. It's just what I like to do. So appreciate everybody that, you know, if, if I put out the comics and everybody said they sucked, well then I probably wouldn't have a job. So, um, you know, I'd be drawn my own comics. <laughs> again but I appreciate um, 
everybody's kind words and had a rough week last week too and this week and personal life stuff and a lot of people follow my personal accounts and a lot of nice messages and things i appreciate the kind words and support it's nice to have people that care around so that's nice it's very uh complicated sometimes life can get a little complicated i better i better look at um the seahorse we got spontaneous seahorse here but i haven't to make sure i'm getting it right or at least decent this is the first time i've drawn her so i want to make sure i thought i had some reference spontaneous do i usually listen to podcasts or music while i work um yes and no <laughs> when i think when i'm writing or like when i'm like trying to sketch it's distracting um but if i'm in like the inking stage where i'm inking or coloring and like the, the work of the writing has been done then yeah i'll uh, i will uh listen to some music or you know listen to music and uh, some podcasts what kind of podcast? It depends. I mean, sometimes I go really deep into the nerd comic culture stuff. Just sometimes I listen to some hip hop like um, music and mostly rock, mostly garage rock, old punk rock stuff. Um, I love Tim Ferriss and Ryan Holiday and all those guys. So they're really cool. But again, like I feel like if I'm listening to something deep, then I got to pay attention and I, that gets a little like, oh man, I just missed what they said. And then I got to rewind and then I'm, then I'm going slow on the comic and, you know, so it's like a choose your own adventure kind of, am I going to want to be in a zone today or, you know, can I take it a little easy? I don't want her to look happy here. She's supposed to look spontaneous seahorse is doing something like really bum, like, Ugh, like house cleaning. So she's got like a vacuum cleaner here. <laughs> First time I've drawn my version of this. Man, I really want to talk about something else, but I can't. But I'm super excited. I wrote some stuff yesterday. And it's really good. Gosh darn it soon i'll be able to tell you about it soon all will be revealed i'm just i feel very stoked i wrote some i don't usually pat myself on the back or nothing like that but i've really been able to do some stuff that i'm really proud of so as a cartoonist and a writer like i don't usually get to to bust out like writing chops, you know, I do, but I don't, if that makes sense. And, um, they're really letting me, they're really, um, letting me fly here. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. Yeah. So good meeting folks up in New York and I, I'll be back. I'll be back up there. You know, the goal is for myself was just, I want to get up there maybe once a month. Um, I'd like to avoid earthquakes and things. That would be nice. Cause I was, I was trapped at the airport for, oh, you know, quite some time. I told this story on Monday a little bit, but I'll tell it again. Cause more people are watching. I thought about the airport strips that we did and how Gary says that like, every time I'm in an airport now, I think of this, which is cool. Gary's like, I, Mike, um, Gary says, my, Gary says that airports are uh, like a microcosm of humanity. You see everything there. Like you see kindness or you see people that are nervous. You see like all kinds of stuff, happiness, reunions. You see people being a-holes. Like you see it all in an airport. And now that I'm observing the airport that way, it's very interesting. So yeah, my plane was delayed because of the air, the 
earthquake and then the earth and then like i just didn't really i was i was kind of in a zone i was like all right you know whatever the day takes me i'm gonna get home sooner or later you know i wasn't too worried about it i used to have really bad travel anxiety and i don't really have that anymore which is super weird it just kind of went away maybe because before i was traveling for things i didn't really want to do i think that's probably it like i had jobs that i i liked but i just didn't want to travel for I'd rather be home and in this case i wish you know i wish i could be there more often amongst all the people and stuff and good energy but anyways um i was stuck at the airport and everyone around me pretty much everyone else around me had anxiety they changed the gate a bunch of times we had to walk all over the newark airport I was just like, okay, exercise, you know, like, and then I'm like, okay, cool. Like whatever. And then it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And people were just getting angrier and angrier and upset. And I was like, man, this is sucks, but whatever, you know, again, what are you going to do? And then, um, when the, <laughs> so I'll, I'll just keep talking about this story for a second. Cause it's kind of fun. It's kind of an interesting, it, it goes somewhere. <laughs> Trust me. Um, so then the plane came and it was late, but then we didn't have a crew. So people that had been waiting for this magical plane to show up and it finally showed up and then there was no crew. So we had to wait for another plane to come for, with the crew. And then people were just like losing their minds. And I'm just cute, cool as a cucumber, you know, like I'm working on comics there <laughs> and I'm drawing. And, uh, you know, some lady sat down with her cat and I, I, I noticed that her like, friend or daughter or something came up and there wasn't enough seats for her to sit with her cat so i made sure i got up and moved and i said hey you know you guys should sit next to each other and she's like oh my goodness mr mr winkers you know <laughs> appreciates that he's a show cat and all that she starts talking to me i was like well i don't really want to talk to you but <laughs> so i was just being nice I was like i don't know about your show cat i got to draw comics but i listened and i was i was nice but I just thought, I thought, well, I don't want them to sit apart because, like, they're obviously together and all these other people are grumpy. And so I deployed that, you know, like, oh, I was being mindful of people around me and just being kind. Of course, I would do that anyways, probably. But so then finally the crew arrives. But as they arrive and there was this really nice attendant um, ticket taker guy, you know, who was just diffusing all these situations. People would come up super angry, like, I don't understand, I was supposed to be, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I know, I know, but and I wanted to tell that guy, like, dude, you were amazing, like, good job. But when the attendants finally arrived, people just expected that these people, these attendants, the flight crew were gonna just jump off that other plane and run over to our plane and immediately start boarding us and i'm like no that's probably not realistic like they're gonna have to go to the bathroom they're probably gonna have to get something to eat i kind of figured that so i was like i know i'm probably gonna get home a little bit later i don't care whatever but everybody else was losing their minds the majority of people were losing their minds hey soggy how you doing hope you have a great day so everybody's losing their minds in the airport and um, the crew finally arrives and they look tired and they have Wendy's bags that haven't even been like, they just picked up their Wendy's and they're like, Oh, and the nice attendant guy, the ticket taker guy was like, oh, I bet you guys aren't even supposed to be here. And like, I, I overheard them saying like, yeah, I guess we're not going home tonight. Like we were supposed like this earthquake jacked everything up. And like the, the one attendant said like, Guess I'm not going home tonight. Like my kids aren't going to see me and everybody else was mad. And I was thinking to myself like, oh man, these poor attendants, like, I mean, then he said, that's part of the job. I heard him say that like, yeah, just part of the job. But I'm like, I don't know. I felt that like, wow, I get to go home. Even though it was delayed, I'm going to be in my bed tonight and they're not going to be, you know? So I thought about. I thought about the comics and things we've been drawing about the airports <laughs> and um and now i've got a good story to tell about that you know the day the earthquake happened <laughs> but 
rewind that again back to New York. It was nice to to sit and like. Also, I wish I would have had more drawings to give out. I just didn't really have a whole lot, a whole lot of time for that. But um, I did some sketches, real quick sketches for people. And one of my favorite moments was getting that um, hi, Anthony. You know, Anthony. Some of you might know him. He comes up to me, introduces himself, and he's like, I used to be a cartoonist and I used to have a daily I used to have a daily strip or a comic in the newspaper or something. I was like, used to be. Used to be a cartoonist. No, no, no. You're all like you're you're a cartoonist, man. And I mean he went on to some like great, you know, successes and things and in his professional career but I was I went and got, grabbed him a sketchbook out of my jacket glad I brought a couple thought I might sometimes I run into artists you know and I want to give them a little notebook and I'm like here man draw fill this up you know and at some point I sat down and I put this picture up there on uh, X and I said all right man draw your characters go you know he hasn't drawn them in a while he was smiling when he was drawing them and uh you know I talked to so many artists through um, my drawing club and that's the thing, you know, people stop drawing because of people stop drawing because of all kinds of things, pressure to make money with it, you know, pressure, family pressure, you know, I understand that too. Like if you have a spouse or you know, you have responsibilities in your family and you don't really have time to be sitting around drawing all day. But I would say like, if it's something deep down you want to do, you got to make some time for yourself too. I think that's one of the most important things. There's a few other people I know that give themselves like a rule of a couple hours a day is just that dedicated to themselves, whether it's going to the gym or learning something new or reading if you don't have that you can't schedule yourself a little bit of time then that kind of is not a really great mood <laughs> so for artists out there for people that wanted to draw you know drawing is fun even if you're not good at it yet can't really mess it up. I'm, I'm already kind of giving this away, but it's like a stunning a friend challenge sort of thing. Like calling up someone, you we'll talk about it a little bit, but like, you know, check in on your friends, you know, call them up. Um, someone you've thought about for a while and thought, I haven't talked to them in a while. Just ring them up and say, Hey man, just thinking about you it can make a big difference i just did that um as a matter of fact a couple weeks ago i i was thinking of a friend in the, in the youtube space won't say his name but he hadn't posted videos in a while and i was sitting here quietly kind of worrying about him while i'm drawing and i'm like i haven't heard from so and so in a while and then my gut told me like i should just reach out to him did that ever, has that ever happened to you? My gut just kind of, and you ignore it sometimes, but like, I haven't been ignoring things lately. If my gut tells me like, I should reach out to so-and-so, I just do it. Cause I don't know what's going on in their life, but, and I don't really want to know sometimes you don't have to share it with me, but I just kind of had a sense that something was off and I don't know that it was. I just reached out to him and said, Hey man universe told me I should say hello to you today and he was like well man tell the universe I said thank you and I just ch chatted with him a little bit and um, you know everybody's doing things in their own life and dealing with their own problems and it's nice to, to kind of just surprise a friend with a letting them know you're thinking about them so challenge you to do that today and I'm going to keep doing that 
I wouldn't say I have a whole lot of close friends that I do that with, but there's definitely a few. I have a lot of art friends, artist friends that I check in on all the time. If I haven't seen that they've posted or something, you know, I'm out their door. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, it's me, the draw every day guy. What's going down? And for some people, it's not drawing, you know, some people it's music or sports or just taking a hike, reading a book. Because uh, thinking about all the stuff, all the junk we have to deal with in life, you know, it's like, can you get a break sometimes? in the chats here sorry i didn't look at the course or the uh the tiktok chat megan's over there steve's over there ah uh, megan you said your um your hand can't hold a pencil very long because of medical reasons i i got a i got a i got a um friend in our drawing club that um he has some issues and he can only draw for like, it's like his doctors told him he's only cleared to draw for like two hours. <laughs> like he can't even, he's in a lot of pain and, but he's like, man, I feel like I got to draw on him. So he'll draw as long as he can. But, um, he told me that the more he did it too, like, you know, just like anything, I suppose it started to feel a little bit better, but he's got to wear like compression. Uh, special compression gloves and stuff. That's crazy. That makes me feel, feel so, oh man, you know, I'm so grateful that I feel terrible that people are going through that, but it also makes me feel so grateful that you know, I got these, I got these hands that work and they're not sore yet. You know, I'm getting old, older, I'm sure. I'll have some arthritis or something sooner or later. But for now, these things work pretty good. So I'm just kind of gra grateful for that. So take things for granted all the time. <laughs> 32 and falling apart. Oh, come on. Put it back together. You put yourself back together. I'm 48 and I'm like, oh, I feel pretty good. You know, keep up with, the, I wouldn't be going out basketballing and stuff. I, I know Gary like hoops it up and, you know, just pretty athletic. And I'm like, I don't know. I've never really been like a sportsman, I guess, maybe in high school, but. Definitely down to do some more hiking and, you know, relaxing sort of outdoor stuff. Really looking forward to more sun. We live in Pittsburgh and there's a lot of jokes. I never really knew this. I mean, I did know this, but I didn't really know this. It was that like Pittsburgh is very overcast a lot of times, like Seattle. You know, you need that vitamin D, you need that sunshine. So like people just get so like bummed out in Pittsburgh sometimes, like they're grumpy sometimes. And and then the sun comes out and everybody's just like, everybody's out there and uh, feeling good. And as soon as the sun, <laughs> as soon as the clouds come back, people are just like, ah, oh. you know, the Steelers and the Pirates better win or this city is just miserable <laughs> but I, I love it <laughs> I love the uh, I love the uh, community misery of when your teams are failing or winning you know it's 
fun. Everybody that finds out that I'm from Pittsburgh, they're like, so you're a Steelers fan? And I'm like, well, <laughs> well, it's complicated. I say things like my go-to reaction is, well, when you're born here in Southwestern Pennsylvania, they, they make you be a Steelers fan. There's no choice in the matter. You're going to grow up and your family's going to be Steelers fans. And that's just the, the end of it. Unless you're from somewhere else and you move here. If you're born here. Oh boy. And if you pick another team, it's like you've betrayed the, the Steelers country. The Steelers fans are crazy, crazy. So I used to be really into that when I was in my twenties, let's say, but I felt so stressed out. And they would lose. I'm like, spend so much time devoted to that, to caring. And then I feel so let down and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. So I stopped watching, uh, stopped watching and following them for a long time. So I was very like fair weather, like, oh, they're doing good. I'm going to check it out, you know? And then I knew some people that kind of had behind the scenes stuff with the Steelers and, uh, you know, I was like, oh man. There's like a, um, a rite of passage here in southwestern Pennsylvania where you have to go to Steelers training camp out in Lake Trobe, PA. It's like this, it's at the college, St. Vincent College. It's quite a, it's quite a deal out there that they have going on and they've been doing it for years. He just... But, you know, it's a fun little escape, sports and things like that. Just don't let it get to you. <laughs> don't let it get to you stress-wise. But, yeah, I feel that. Whenever Gary talks about the Jets and, like, his Sunday thing being, like, that's the only time he's like, I used to sit, I got some comics out there from a long time ago, somewhere where like I had sports related comics and we would make fun of the rituals. Like I used to say that if I kept my thumb up during the game, that it would create a Super Bowl ring for the thumb. So the, char the character in the strip was like constantly holding his thumb up during the, and then when he put his thumb down, he, he blamed himself. And I think my ex, um, well, not my ex, he's, oh <laughs> he's since passed away. So, wow. Father-in-law, stepfather-in-law. No? Yeah. I don't know what you call him. Stepfather-in-law, Bill was a big Bills fan. But he, he loved the Steelers too, but he couldn't watch them anymore because he felt like he made them lose. <laughs> so if we go to his house on a Sunday, we're like, are you watching the Steelers game? Said, no. No. He would watch the highlights. But he felt like if he turned them on, he was the one causing them to lose. Philadelphia, Megan, that's over on the other side of the state, but it's very similar. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Very similar vibe <laughs> happening in Pennsylvania <laughs> sports. Uh, any Amish near me? No. Um, in southwestern Pennsylvania, we have a lot of steel mills and, oh, bro, you know, um, in the old industry stuff so the amish are up more up north and northeast um, but we do have some amish guys that sell donuts on the corner of the highway and <laughs> these giant amish donuts and cookies and things um, but no buggies or anything like that that's over near lancaster near 
more close to Harrisburg too. I like Pennsylvania because, well, you know, I actually like the seasons changing and um, the real estate is very affordable. <laughs> when I tell people like, you know, you can get a house, we got our house for $160,000. My first house that I ever bought when I was very young was only $17,000, guys. Like, it was a little cottage, but <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're from anywhere else, <laughs> think about that <laughs> for a minute. So my mortgage payment, you know, is, is very low. But I have friends that live in New York and I have friends all over. And I used to live in different places and it's like, Oh my God, <laughs> you better be making a lot of money to even just kind of scrape by. Like it's, oh, uh, you know. Hey, Green Dog, thanks. Yeah, I'm just kind of cruising through this one here as much as I can today. Get these panels done. Working on next week's strips too. I started writing some of those for our meeting. We have a meeting, new meeting this week. Maybe we'll talk about some of the behind the scenes, thinking of the strips and stuff like that. But we've got like a little inner circle to pitch, pitch comics and do character development and stuff like that. So it's fun. Really fun. I gotta say, like I was I was I'll be totally honest with you. Whenever I saw that we were making Stun Sun the character of the week, I was I was struggling with that. I was like, man, I don't know. Like how do you how do you make that? And I had to really like <laughs> you know, think about it a lot. And then I got it. I was like, okay. So and I just wrote a new one this morning too. And I was like, oh, this is good. This is good. Oh. The eclipse made it easy. That was an easy joke. But after that, it's like you got a stunned sun in the sky. Like, what does stun mean? You know, like, it can mean different things. But this comic here is basically the idea of like kind of stunning a friend. Like, like reaching out to a friend you haven't talked to in a while. Uh, you know, the turtle won the race. I don't know what you mean. I'm the turtle, I guess. Uh, Yeah, I've been thinking about Stun Stun and like calling up a friend that you haven't thought of. Because like, eh, you know, I felt that before where like a friend would reach out. I haven't talked to him in a while and I'm like, wow, wasn't expecting to hear from you. So like being shocked or there's all kinds of different ways that you can approach it. So got a few more to do this week. I hope you enjoy today's strip. If you didn't see it, let's go back real quick. Was based on something that's going on in pop culture. And that's, um, J Cole dropped a diss track on Kendrick Lamar and then felt bad about it. So it's a little hip hop joke, but I mean, it doesn't matter if you don't know that basically Fox dropped a diss track on the sun disc track records the sun is dumb it's all spelled wrong <laughs> um, and then he felt bad for it so these are like actually J. Cole's kind of words that he said in his apology and I moved in a way that feels spiritually bad on me and then the sun's like wow and he's like I am honestly stunned by you right now He's like, my apology? And he's like, no, I had no idea you could rap. 
Oh, burn. The sun is burned. It could just go on forever. Like the sun could give mad burns. <laughs> is that a diss? So. <laughs> Whitney, as soon as, yeah, Andy gave me that idea. He's like, can we do something with this? This is going down over in hip hop land. And I was like, all right, all right, I got it. I got it. I was like, I forget we were originally going to do competitive clown. But every time I put clown in the strip, people just don't like it. You know, people don't like clowns. It's not just because they don't like competition. It's the the clown just scares people away. I'm telling you. I like the clown. I like competitive clown. But I'm like, oh, man, mixtape. It's got to be Flex and Fox. With this, he just looks like he'd have a mixtape. Or like a this track. So I had another idea. Maybe you'll see it coming up in the future. Now, when I first started working on V friends and I was thinking of burn Island, it's the first thing I thought of was like rap battles on burn Island. <laughs> I think I said that in a meeting and like, everybody was like, what? And I'm like, I oh, just trust me. Trust me. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, Rap battles on Burn Island. You know. It was really funny because I think I know one of the I know one of the let's just I'm just gonna I'm gonna give him a bunch of flowers right now and say that I know one of the greatest MCs to ever walk the planet. And that's Johnny Five of the Flowbots. And I bet you any money if I reached out to Johnny Five and I was like, hey man, will you write me a rap for <laughs> will you write a rap for these characters? He would do it. He's great. He can rap in like nine languages. That's why he's the greatest MC ever. Like Johnny Five, the Flowbots. Such a good dude. He's doing a lot of good out there and and I never thought about that. I should get the Flowbots to write a, a V Friends theme song for us. Hmm. Hmm. Do they owe me? I don't know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they would just do it because. They would just do it. Honestly. If you know the Flowbots, kind of. They're my friends, but they're also like. You know, kind of one hit wonders. I can ride my bike with no handlebars, but man, they're so good. They're so, so good. I used to work for them, um, doing all kinds of stuff. We did a comic, we did. And then they're like, hey, do you know how to do merch design? I'm like, yeah. They're like, hey, do you, you don't know do websites? So I was like, suddenly I was like, they're, they're online. Um, like not tour manager, but like I was posting all the stuff on their website and kind of like their eye in the sky. And we did a, a fun little augmented reality game back before that was a thing. They did a Ted talk about it. That was some fun stuff. They're just so talented, talented storytellers, Denver. There from Denver. And they're awesome. Man, I bet you now that I'm thinking about it, like they're just so good. I don't know who's gonna be at VCon, but man, I just thought of this now and I'm like, the Flowbot should be at VCon. Nobody would care. <laughs> like they're not like a big, big name, but I think everybody would really enjoy it. Their music's really good. <clears throat> One of my favorite songs, if you want to look it up, is called Jetpack. Jetpack, Flowbots. That's one of my favorite songs. There's a line in there called, it says like, are you fueled by another engine? 
and I was like, talk to Johnny about this. Jamie is his real name. I was like, I totally know what you're talking about. You're just, when you're full of like a passion, you're fueled by some other engine that just keeps you going. You don't need to sleep or eat really like you do, but you don't, you know? And then like, there's a line that's like, you are not like me. That's a good song, man. I'd play it right now, but I'd probably get the V friends channels demonetized or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, so yeah, I, I worked a little bit in the music industry. Isn't that weird? Like we, they worked with universal records and I learned a lot about the music industry <laughs> from them. And, um, my friend Andy that works in, uh, he had other bands and stuff. And as soon as it went to uh, record label time, it was hilarious for me to learn. Like you figure on the outside, you're like, oh man, a record label, they must have everything that they need. Like they're going to have a killer website. And like the guy that was running the, the guy that was running the websites for the music label, it was universal Republic music. They didn't under, they didn't know how to change from like old PHP code to like newer web stuff. And I'm like, Ooh, guys, like this isn't good. Can we have like a good SEO blog? And like a, it was bad. It was just really outdated. And I knew more about the website and I'm like, I wasn't even a web designer, but I knew more about web design than the person running the websites there for the artists. So they were like, can we, can you work with DJ to work? And I'm like, how did I get, how did I become the guy that's doing this? But I did it, you know, so, <laughs> and it was fun. Funny story about that is, and I don't know if any of this is like true or not. Might've just been our own speculation, but we designed this game where you could go around and have coordinates. This is before Pokemon Go or anything like that. And you could find the coordinates kind of based on like geocaching. And we were hiding little songs and things on like discs and you could find our um, thumb drives. And there were like codes and things you could figure out through the Flowbots music. It was fun. So I designed this like whole game. And then they were going to get the record label to take some of the marketing budget and put it into that unique experience with fans. Um, and the record label said, no, they were like, no, no, we're not going to do anything R and D. But then I didn't know this. And I found out later on from the other guy in Flowbots. He said, DJ, did you know when we went to Universal, we pitched that idea to a company and then that the people that were in that company started another company that basically then started like Niantic Labs or something like that. And they're the ones that put out um, a couple ARG games and then Pokemon Go. So he told me like years later, he's like, DJ, do you play Pokemon Go? I'm like, I do. It's fun. And he's like, does it seem familiar to you? And I'm like, well, not really. It's different. But he's like, well, those were the same guys that were in the meetings when they, they took the idea for the, and I was like, really? I don't know about that. But that's what, that was the feeling that was. But everybody kind of past stories like that where they're like someone stole an idea from me but it was weird <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> like oh okay i had to take take their word for it because but i i've, I've been involved in so many creative things that i just think well i think pretty deeply on that subject about ideas like there are no new ideas guys and like 
you can take old ideas and revamp them and make them new and you know um but i also kind of the more i have you ever thought of an idea and then suddenly you're you're like i was just i thought of that but you didn't take action on it well there's some like things out there you know they're kind of fantastical ideas but they're kind of cool to think about is like there's an idea stream it's like your your thoughts and ideas are like out there in wi-fi land like just floating around and if you don't grab them and start taking action someone else will hear those or you know like get those ideas and like actually take action on them it's like the idea stream and i'm like okay that's neat (laughs) that's how things seem familiar to you like it is interesting sometimes because someone will say like how did you come up with the idea for this or that i'm like i don't know people that write songs will say the same thing they're like i don't know bob dylan actually said that he didn't write any of the songs that they just came out of nowhere like they were like whispered to him and i'm like that's cool bob dylan you're cool <laughs> You can curse over in the chat. I try not to curse, but that's just me. I try not to. I don't mind it. You know, I don't mind it. But every now and then something slips out. (laughs) Did you listen to the Jetpack song? It's pretty like it'll fire you up like it'll make you go like yeah yeah this is a commercial for the flow bots <laughs> accidentally commercial for the flow bots so yeah oh dan dan read that the other day that cursing may be a sign of intelligence well that's great news <laughs> Yeah, go listen to that that song, Jetpack by the Flowbox, Flowbots, and come back. It's a good one. It's a good one. What's even better is when you see it live, and they're playing it live, and Br'er Rabbit, the other MC, he does like dancing, robot dancing. And he's so good, pop lock dancing. He's so good. It almost looks like he's like a robot. He's cool. Those dudes are so cool. So talented. I think that Jamie works at a Johnny five, the MC. I don't know that I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's a, it's a nonprofit in Denver that he kind of works at now for a long time where they take refugees from other countries and they like teach them English and get them jobs and like like it's really really good um and they're like usually moms with like kids and things that like were in some kind of crazy um i went to the i went to the facility and it was super nice he he like teaches them to read like children's books and stuff like it's a good dude man jamie that's someone see you know what i haven't talked to my flowbots friends in a while I think I'm going to message Jamie today and just say, hey, man, I was thinking about you today. I'm going to do that. I feel like the sun needs a sticker of the sun on his phone. So he knows it's his. <laughs> okay. 
are we talking about 21 pilots? No, we're talking about Megan. We're talking about Flowbots, the Flowbots jetpack, the Flowbots. <laughs> Used to work for them. 21 pilots, I don't. Sounds like the band they collaborated with, though. 21 Pilots, or was it... Uh, I forget. Yeah, I had a lot of fun working with the Flowbots. I got my artwork on Conan O'Brien, Jay Leno. MTV. <laughs> my artwork's in one of their videos for Rise. A song called Rise. They're cool guys, cool dudes and ladies. There's a viola player that Mackenzie, she was in the original band and she left the band. And I forget the young lady's name that plays um, the viola now, but um, they're great. Good people. I'd like to get out to Denver again. I've been there in a while, a couple of years. I like Denver. Although the last time I was there I was a little a little sketchy. A little sketchy. Downtown was a little bit rough that I met that I remembered and well it got worse I guess because of there's a lot of drugs and stuff that drug problems that are going down in tent cities and stuff and that's a shame but I never really never really scared of being any place but the people that I was with they were kind of like a little worried and I could see why we were walking up to uh walking up to a um uh, a convenience store and there was some guy standing outside with a bat just like standing there like, like a, oh my god man wasn't a baseball player it was the guy that was trying to look intimidating by holding a bat. But he obviously knew this bat. And now that I think about it, like he probably needed this bat because protection, self-protection on the streets kind of thing. <laughs> I wouldn't have messed with him, you know, like he's got a bat. Like he knew how to swing it too. So I'm like, all right, I'll just leave that guy alone. I just like to get my coffee. So uh, same thing with like people that go to New York. Um, so many, it's just so many that people I know are like, oh my God, New York is so bad. And I'm like, nah, it's not really though. Like it's, I don't know. I don't really feel that way. I feel like you just, well, she doesn't have a son on her phone. Like, um, it's common sense, you know, don't, don't go where you're not supposed to be. You know, you don't want to be roaming around some dark alley somewhere <laughs> or running around with a MacBook out or, you know, I mean, common sense, you know, common sense. But I love New York. I love it. It's a good, I like the energy up there. For me, the thing that I like most about New York has nothing to do with New York itself. There's just so much history there from the comic book industry and I know all the old stories. So like when I walk by like Bryant park, I know that that's the park where Jack Kirby, you know, when he first got his first publishing deal, he bought a suit. 
it was actually for newspaper strips jack kirby he was um, gonna get into newspaper strips and saw that as more of a success than comic books actually at the time if you got on a comic strip it was like big big time and he um he bought a fancy suit and rolled up to his friends on, at Bryant Park he had a cane like a pimp cane <laughs> and they're like wow you've made it Jack so I like to walk by those places and kind of sit down and just think about like you know my heroes and comics and stuff being around He grew up on Delancey Street or something, I think. So he grew up in a real tough neighborhood in New York. There's a really fun story of Jack Kirby where when he was drawing Captain America, you know, Captain America fought Nazis. Okay, right. And this is back during World War II. So, or during Nazi times. And he, um, people would call the Marvel offices and give them death threats and say like, we're coming for you, Jack. <laughs> and he'd be like, I'll meet you down in the lobby. <laughs> he was like this tough little dude. He wasn't going to put up with anything. And I was like, man, that's a cool. He's like, Oh yeah. Are you down there right now? Like, let's go. Like <laughs> he was a fiery little guy. Jack Kirby. Love that story. <laughs> so, yep, love Jack Kirby. You know, Stanley gets a lot of the big credit, but Jack pretty much saved that whole industry from the collapse. It's crazy. Some people you meet are on some other level. Jack Kirby was one of those guys. He was on definitely a different level. He was fueled by another engine. That's for sure. Hey, Instagram, I'm sorry. I have not looked at your comments, but wow, that's a lot. There's a lot of back and forth or there's a lot of, I'm going to scroll through real quick. Really sorry, Instagram. I haven't looked at any, it's harder to see the comments on Instagram because there's a lot of like everybody joins and leaves and joins and leaves quite a few. So if I I'm just gonna scan through and see if I see any questions in there real quick, sorry about that. I'm just glad that I got it to work. You know, so if you're watching over on Instagram, I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing the comic and liking it over on the, the feed every day too. But only if you really like it, I'm not asking you any favors. If you like it, share it. Don't just do it for me. Do it because you love the V friends or something resonated with you. Speaking of which, um, what's your favorite V friend and why I'll check the chats here in a minute, but if you're listening, who are you vibing with? Which character are you vibing with this week or why, you know, curious. Always curious about that. And I know it can change from time to, you know what? This week I'm vibing with the sun. I'm vibing with Stun Sun. I just drew a new comic this strip this morning and I was like, I was feeling it. I was like, man. I wrote, wrote one. I was feeling You know, sometimes they gotta be fun, silly comics, but other times it might be a little 
deeper. You know, we got those deeper ones that hit you. I'm definitely having more of a reflective time in my <laughs> personal life where I'm like thinking about a lot of, you know, heavier issues and stuff. And drawing these comics and working on art really helps you think about things differently. Like I said, like the airport story I told earlier, like I used to have a lot of travel anxiety. I can't say for sure that working on friends fixed all my travel nightmares, but I think it's more along the lines of that I enjoy what I'm doing and I'm, I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere anymore, you know? So before, if I was traveling for work, I might not be too happy about where I was going or leaving my home, my dog and my family here, my wife. And sorry, I mentioned my dog first, Alicia. You know what I'm talking about, this dog. My dog is very attached to me. She thinks I'm dead when I'm not here. So, you know, <laughs> when I come back, it's the whole thing. It's like a whole like, oh my God, you're still alive. You exist. You weren't my imagination. And then I got to spend like two days with my dog, just like chilling out. He's right over there. She's always like within three feet of me. Jesus music up. What's going on here? Okay. What else do I got? What else do I got? Look in here. Checking my messages real fast. All right, great. Cool, cool. I'm just cruising through it today. Sun Sun Week. I'm excited for next week's comics too. I got some ideas I'm gonna drop to the team soon and I got some fun fun ideas. It's, it's it's very like nothing's really set in stone. Like we can change things for now and like very fun to just test and try different things and some things we think are gonna hit and they don't some things we didn't think were gonna fly off kind of people get excited about but it's always nice to see even decisive duck week you know I see the comments out there where people are like I think the duck is my favorite character now because you get to like kind of see him being more the personality no. thinking about that I'm thinking a lot about story structure and flow and really just diving deep into the topic of for me personally like just being a cartoonist what that means really defining it I never used to like that term I don't know why not it wasn't that I didn't like it. it just felt like if someone called me a cartoonist I felt like you think I'm just doing baby stuff or you know you think I'm just doing like it sounded too playful to me maybe you know cool this is coming along pretty good I'm going to start rocking and rolling here in some colors. Why not? Reference layer. I'm going to go 
back, grab my son from yesterday. I know he looks a little bit different than the uh, the version two, but it's okay. There's going to be some variations in the different things that we put out for sure. That's all right. Like I feel like you know, it's almost like Spider-Man or something. You know, you see a different Spider-Man. Pretty good it's pretty good so what i'm doing here is i'm just bringing the colors in so i can keep the colors consistent across the strips and um i should probably do a scan real fast to make sure my lines are closed lines are closed lines are closed so that's always a bummer when i'm trying to do my new coloring thing and then it doesn't, doesn't do it it bums me out it bums me out whatever it doesn't Kind of just quizzing myself now where i'm thinking when was the last time a friend stunned me called me up and stunned me with something well in a good way i won't think of the bad ways <laughs> like no one wants to be stunned by bad news but um I'm trying to think of that it's been a while dwell on that for a minute I guess calls is a bad I don't really answer the phone <laughs> I don't really <laughs> I don't really answer the phone much but I get some DMs from old friends especially lately and, uh, it's nice people are just pretty happy to see me doing well I got a lot of friends from high school I'm 48 so I get these friends from high school that see me on social media and they're like, they're just mesmerized because they're like, man, you've not changed. Like, that's how great is it that I, right? It's not that I, I definitely changed, but I'm still doing what I love to do. You know, they remember me doing comics in the school newspaper. And so they're like, wow, you're still out there doing a thing. <laughs> like, man, you're doing it. I'm like, yep, it's, you know, I don't want to say it's the only thing I know how to do, but it's the thing I like to do the most. And it's the thing that I probably am the best at in my life. So, you know, um, can't be anyone else. I used to struggle back and forth with, I was thinking about this this morning where I would struggle back and forth with um, comic strips versus comic books. So I did both and I would be like, I can't do both at the same time. I can't be a comic strip drawer and a comic book person. I need to pick one or the other. These were just weird rules I made for myself. It took me for a long time in my early, my late teens, early twenties. I was like, I can choose one or the other. I cannot do both. I must draw a comic strip or get into superhero like you know comic books and it wasn't until i was much later in life that i realized it's not true <laughs> why did i even think that you know it's so weird the rules that we put on ourselves it's super weird That's an excuse, really. Like, maybe I was afraid or something. I don't know. Maybe I was afraid of being judged. Thanks, Bob. Bob says he always watches the... Um, comics over on Instagram. Appreciate that. Appreciate you liking and sharing it. And share it to your stories. Um, somebody on Instagram, let's see here, the half, the Halifax Honey Company, Halifax Honey Company asked, I love Stunt Son 
Any idea when you're working on Honest Honeybee? Well, guess what? You're going to see Honest Honeybee next week. Amazing. I feel like you have some inside dope or something. But no, Honest Honeybee next week. And uh, I'm excited about it because I got some cool ideas for that. I got some cool ideas for that one. Excited. And I can see why that's probably one of your favorite characters. If you're a honey company, right? I'm afraid if I click this, it will. The Halifax Honey Company. Also, I love honey. So, my favorite type of honey is um, no one cares about this. What am I just talking randomly? <laughs> This is what I do, guys. Like, I'm going to just talk about the first stream of thought that comes to my head. Talk about honey. I love, like, honey with orange in it. Like, orange. Um, I wouldn't know what to say. Like, there's an orange blossom honey that we get sometimes. No, I haven't had that in a long time. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, I got to do some of that soon my wife and I were just having a conversation in the car about bees last night we got mason bees that come around our porch she's like our bees are back I'm like those aren't the same bees she's like yes they are I'm like they're not the same bees that have been coming for years they die so I had to look up like the lifespan of mason bees because mason bees don't really sting you they're just gentle they're good pollinators and you know I'm not a big fan of bees in general like you know I got kind of not a fear of bees but like I don't like I don't want to hang around bees all day <laughs> if there's a bee I'm like I'm staying away from it <laughs> gotta see something real quick because I messed up Uh, he's got kind of brown eyes, which is weird. Try to watch the, watch the chat over here real quick. Solo herself said likes that the phone case is a sun. Thank you. Trying to check all the chats. So I got the Instagram chat looking through that. I'll check the TikTok chat real quick. Oh, see, you got the uh, you got the alpha share if you're listening. Like, a little sneak peek at the featured character coming up. Turn off these pencils, man. You know, someone asked that I knew, and it's not like it's top secret information. I don't think so. It's not like it's going to make or break anything. But yeah, you'll see some bees next week. For sure. Appreciate you guys checking in and watching. This is the daily comic strip. That I'm drawing for V Friends. If you're not familiar with V Friends, I'm just going to reset this real quick. You can go over to V Friends. Over 280 characters created by Gary Vaynerchuk. Hey, David, popping in to see how it's going. Going pretty good. I'm resetting the stream right now. Um, we got merch. We got over 280 characters. If you click a character, and I'm just going to go ahead and just click Gracious Grizzly. I think he's in one, at least one comic, right? Click him. When you click the character, you'll be able to see the comics that he's in, and he's not tagged correctly. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to go back and re-tag that. Let's say you click Alert Ape here, you'll be able to see all the comics that he's tagged in. And then you can um, go into that. You can now read all of the comics in an archive, folder, download, share. You can also see these tags here. So if you click a tag, 
for common sense cow. Now we can see all the times common sense cow has showed up. And up here in the far left, you can see Comic Corner. And you got a whole archive full of strips up here. Somebody asked about the pencil topper. Well, pencil topper is the V Friends minis. You can find them in um, all around the country. There's a map here on the website where these vending machines are located. Oops, these vending machines here. Look like that. And um, you can collect them all. There's a whole bunch of, some of them are rare, you know. There's a whole bunch of characters for series one and two. And I think there's a new series coming out pretty soon. So, yep, I'm going too fast there. And again, I think if you click, you know, the character, it'll go right to their character profile page. So you can click Humble Hedgehog. And he's in a, a lot of comics. He's in more comics than this. So obviously I haven't tagged him correctly. I'll have to go back and make sure we've got him tagged. Right. I'll write that down. Do that. So. Faithful Pheasant. Ginger Beloved asked for a Faithful Pheasant. No plans right now, but I'm sure it'll come. I'm sure that we will do that at some point. Pearl Jam fans, they call the fan base the faithful. Because, you know, well, I don't really know why. There's a song called Faithful by Pearl Jam. That's probably why. But people like. But it's Faithful with two L's. Yeah. Good song. Good song. Check it out. <laughs> faithful by Pearl Jam. I'm like a DJ here. I'm like a real legitimate. Uh, let's get the... What was I doing there? I was coloring the sun's eyeballs. That's what I'm doing. Cruising through this one. Really happy about that. Got a new flow behind the scenes that I'm pretty happy about. I didn't get distracted with other things going on. Not in Be Friends land, but you know, just got a lot of stuff going on to distract me. <laughs> so. Trying to take it you know, not be so hard on myself. And, uh, it's a good lesson to be kinder to yourself too. Somebody told me um, that I was like Mr. Rogers for grownups. And I was like, all right take it I guess I've heard the Bob Ross thing before people are like man you look you sound like Bob Ross are you like calming like Bob Ross or and I'm like well thanks appreciate that too that dude was a good dude and hey, anytime that I can be put in a bucket with other good dudes I'm I'm grateful for that so thank you thanks for saying that appreciate that so a lot those are some big shoes to fill Bob Ross and Mr. Rogers, geez. I don't know. I do have a pretty fun, um, do I have it right here? My goodness. No, I don't. Whoa. Whoever mentioned Mr. Rogers. I do, I do have it right here. Look at this, I'm gonna show you now. Switch to my desktop view. There's a, well, how do I get this? Let me show you. There's a Mr. Rogers pin that I got from, wait, is it upside down? 
It is. <laughs> it's very tiny writing on there. But it's the neighborhood trolley pin. And I got this for... Um, I got this from Mr. Rogers people for volunteering. We're well, not volunteering. I was a guest over at um, um, Mr. Rogers days over in Lake Trobe. I'm, I'm really close to Lake Trobe, Pennsylvania. And Mr. Rogers is from there. So like they have Mr. Rogers days and I went and I drew last summer. Um, we have a children's book for the local county that I live in. And um, do I have that? I've never shown any of this stuff on the stream. Do I even have that here? It's a children's book. Come back to this view. It's um. I want to just do a view of that. Okay. Um, it's called "Go Discover Westmoreland," and it's a children's history of the. Um, county that we live in. So if there's a Steeler, that's Franco Harris, I think, number 32. The trolley, and um, yeah, they reached out to me about doing this children's book um, last year. I think we did it last year. And um, it was just a really fun way to talk about the history all the way back to um, whatever. So it's a good way to teach kids about the history and like even talking about like the the people that weren't treated very well you know there were there were slaves here and there were you know people that weren't treated very well in the community but yeah this was the little children's book i did so they kind of had me there signing this this um, um children's book and Um, they, they just, the guy from Mr. Rogers foundation came up and said, you get one of these pins. And I was like, well, thanks. It's super nice of you. But like you're carrying on the spirit of Mr. Rogers. I was like, well, thanks. I, I tell you, I'll be honest with you. When I was a kid, my grandma made me watch Mr. Rogers and I hated it. <laughs> I wanted to watch Nickelodeon and, uh, she was like very churchly and she was like no you're gonna watch mr rogers and, oy but it must have embedded something in me because i really liked the crafts and things that they used to do on that show you know, but, uh, anyways i appreciate mr rogers now if you just joined this someone said that was like mr rogers for adults i do have a craft closet like I got like a bunch of art supplies over there and you know, I've got some fish. And now that I think about it every morning, I take a walk with the dog and instead of putting on like a cardigan, I put on like a hoodie and a hat and I walk out and walk the dog. And I do kind of think to myself like, this is funny because I'm like happy to be alive every day. So I'm like such a good feeling to be alive. <laughs> I'm like, holy cow, I got to sing this song. And my wife's like, don't. Don't do that. Don't be singing the Mr. Rogers song every morning. It'll be weird. It'll be weird. Such a good feeling to know you're alive. I think I'll make a snappy new day. All right, a long story short, said they listened to Flowbot's Jetpack. That was one of your missions for today. Um, Listen to the Jetpack song by the Flowbots. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, so. Someone said about not knowing I did. Charles book, where are you? Where's that comment at? Yeah, I've done a couple children's books. 
That's always fun. Adam Fitz over there on uh, Adam. I talked to you at that event and they gave me that pin. Adam? Adam's from around that area, right? The neighborhood, right? That's a good people around here. It's a good vibe. I like it. For the most part, you know, I mean, there's bad people too, but what are you going to do? You know, like, you got to just be nice to everybody. Hopefully, you know. We live in an area that's um, very not politically divided or anything. I don't know. It's just a lot of, there's a lot of politics and stuff. And, you know, it's a shame that things divide us so much. And I've been thinking about that so much the past couple of years and people are hurt. People hurt and all over. And I'm just trying to find that common ground to talk to people around here about things. But sometimes you get in a room with a bunch of old timers and they're complaining about some serious you know, big political things, and I, I just get stoic. So if I go to my barber and they're like, can you believe this is happening and that not happening? And I'm like, what do you think about that, DJ? And I'm like, oh, man, I think that nothing changes. I, I just get so stoic. I'm like, I think that everything's happened before and that the world's okay and we're going to be all right. <laughs> like, nothing that's gone on hasn't gone on before. And by the way, the sun rises every morning and sets for now. And uh, every day is a new day to begin. And they're like, all right, shut up now, DJ. Like, <laughs> they wanted to complain. And I'm like, you know what, guys? I don't really think it's that bad. Wrong? Am I wrong? When you really break it down, it's not so damn bad. It's not bad. All of the problems that we have, if we would just talk to each other and, you know, I'm going a little long today because I don't think I have any other things going on. I'll check my schedule real quick, check my messages, make sure there's no fires happening in comics land. I doubt it. DJ, we got a panel on aisle five that we need you to get to. Um, now I'm in it. Now I'm, now I'm in this. Might as well just keep it on. But I was just having some conversations with, you know, again, thinking about the V friends really has changed my, I mean, I was already kind of getting into a different mindset before joining the V friends team, but I really feel like um, there's been some heavy stuff happening around the comic book community and a lot of, you know, a lot of people just, I, I don't want to get into much of the drama, but anyways, there were some people that I really respected saying some really, you know, bad things, like things that bummed me out. And I was like, I got to tell them, I got to tell them like, so I just commented and I'm like, I said like, Hey man, I just want you to know, like, this is bumming me out. Like, I, I know how you really feel about certain things, and I just want to let you know. And then they were like, oh, my goodness, I never knew. So we were talking about art click. Uh, I'll get a little bit deeper for you there. but We're talking about art clicks. How there's like, oh, there's that click, and you're not invited to that group. And I said, you know, I used to feel that way, too. I'm specifically talking about my friend Joe Woes, who used to run the Toonzium here in town when I was a young cartoonist I wanted to get involved in things and um, I reached out and I, I felt dissed when I was younger like I felt like oh they must not think I'm a real artist right but then as I grew older I realized like none of that's true like that's they're busy and I'm not even on their radar that's the truth and I know that now but so to hear the same people complaining that there's this click that they're not invited to I wanted to remind him that I felt that way once about him and his situation. And he really said, wow, I never, I'm so sorry you felt that way. But had I never expressed that, and it was hard to say it. I was like, he might be mad at me and say like, I don't want to talk to you ever again. 
but I had to tell him. I had to express that to him and just say like, you know, I really respect you and what you're doing now, but I just want you to know what you just said. I felt the same way about you at one point. Did you know that? So these ideas that people are isolating you or whatever might just be in our own minds. And that's been my experience. And that's from stoicism, right? Like, so the, the, the things that you um, fear the most or the worries that you have are mostly your own imagination. They're probably not even a thought in the person's mind. Like, are they talking about you or they, they don't want you in their club or, oh man, you're at a party and they don't see you. Like you think about these things when you're in there, right? And then the more you really understand life, you just go like, I'm probably not even a thought in their head. And also they don't know because I'm not talking to them directly. I'm, I'm shy or whatever. And, and then Joe told me, he's like, you know what? You're right, TJ. Like I'm a cartoonist that's isolated and I don't talk to anyone. I have three friends that I, I keep it to myself. And so you're right. I'm, I take that back. I take back those things I said. And I was like, okay, cool. I really respected that. And I just told him, you know, but, I, but you'll never know unless you have friends that are willing to say, Hey, I hear what you're saying, but here's this other perspective, you know? So I've gotten, and I don't usually butt in. This would be, this was a big, com this is a big news thing that was going on and everyone was commenting on it. And it was just bumming me out to see my friends trashing each other, my art friends. And I just, I had to say something, and, you know? felt like an adult. I felt like I had to be a dad. I'm like, I'm putting my dad hat on here. I, I just got to tell you, like, guys, half of the things we're worried about right now are, are, um, you know, half the things we worry about are just not. Yeah, Adam said, it's crazy how creative people feel excluded or jealous and have these negative feelings about other communities. It's true. Like it's, I hang out with so many artists and then, you know, that's the, that's like the small talk that happens. Um, what program do I recommend to draw comics in? I use procreate here on the, um, the comic. I have all the comics inside of procreate procreate costs like 10 bucks for one time only. And then you have it forever. And I draw everything in procreate. There's tons and tons and tons of all this stacks and stacks of art um follow drafts over on instagram ask Let's see what else cool all right thank you thanks for thanks for liking the comics guys appreciate it but yeah it's tough sometimes you know it's tough to have a conversation with friends and like just like ooh. But when you're hanging out with creatives, you know, I'm just going to be honest because we do like if I'm hanging around art friends and they're like, can you believe so-and-so did or, oh, I don't like that guy's art or blah, 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 blah. I see it in my drawing community too sometimes where they're just kind of like trashing each other or trashing another artist that they don't know. And I'm like, man, we got to be matter to each other it's hard to make a creative life let alone you know anything else and, uh, i don't know i've always thought that anytime i see a creative person making it like if it's a musician or anything like that i'm just i'm just kind of stoked for them because i feel like it's a right i feel like it's good for everybody that's my that's my thought Or people want to drag you into their drama. Like they want you to comment, like, what do you think of this crazy drama? And I'm like, I don't really have an opinion on that. Like I, that's another stoic thing that I, I, you're allowed to not have an opinion. And when you won't take a stand and they're like, well, you must be on that side of this. And I'm like, no, I just don't, I just don't even think about it. I just, my perspective is what I said. I think I woke up today and it's good. 
<laughs> you know, like might not be perfect, but I'm going to try my best to, um, you know, do my best with what I got. And I hope that you do too. And they go, We're, you're not allowed to come to this party anymore, DJ, because you're, you're not willing to argue. And I'm like, all right, sweet. See you guys later. Got some comics to draw. No skin off my back. <laughs> I used to feel that way about, there's a local cartoonist society. Um, I've never joined the National Cartoonist Society. I think I might. I think I might now. You know, you dress up and wear a suit and go to like some fancy parties and stuff with other cartoonists. And <laughs> I'd like to do that maybe. Um, why not? Um, but there's a local group that gets together. And I never really made it out because I had to work all the time. And one day I was like, I'm going to, I met, let it be known. I'm like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to come. And then I showed up and it turned out the day that I showed up, all the people that I wanted to meet didn't show up. And I felt in my own mind, like they didn't show up because I was, they found out that I was coming. That was like something that was in my mind, you know? And if I told them that, I would, I'm sure that they would be like, no, oh my God. And maybe a couple of them would be like, we don't want to hang out with you. Man. But I just wanted to be part of a, that community somehow. Like, hey, they're cartoonists, I'm cartoonists. We all live in Pittsburgh. We can learn from each other. And um, that was all in my head, what I'm trying to say. But then again, sometimes I show up to things like that and it's artists that are like, can you believe this person? And it's usually they're complaining about somebody that's successful. And then I just don't feel comfortable with that either. I just don't want to, don't want to um, get into, I don't like to have negative energy around me, you know, probably not a good, probably good advice. But if their people are my friends, then I feel like I got to tell them, I got to tell them, like, guys, you're really dwelling on the wrong thing. Imagine if you put your energy into making something uh, cool instead of feeling like you deserve something or I don't know. It gets deep. It gets dark with people sometimes like people dwell. There was a cartoonist that took a bunch of Kickstarter money and I, I was involved in it. They got me to give a quote for this Kickstarter and then the guy never, uh, I think he took the money and never did anything. And so there was a bunch of cartoonists that were like, DJ, can you believe they just wanted me to like trash this person? And I'm like, I don't know, man. You know, I thought he was a good cartoonist and whatever. I don't know what happened there. It's a shame, but I'm not going to dwell on it, but I'm just going to move on. You know, I'm not going to sit there and be like, this person's awful. It's, you know, cancel the person or whatever. That's not going to do anything for any of the cartoonists. Do you want to have news out there that cartoonists are fighting against each other? And then people will think that that's the vibe about artists. I don't want that. So that's my that's my hot take on just being peaceful and trying to, you know, find some unity. Yeah, yeah David, we don't we don't even allow it in the uh, draw or die club. We we're not strict with it because we don't get much of it. But occasionally, somebody will come in and be like. Occasionally somebody will come in with some crazy rant and we're like, Hey, we delete it and we message them. And so we just say like, Hey, listen, that's not, this isn't for that. We don't want anyone to feel bad. I want you to feel good drawing. So but yeah, you got to deploy the kind candor and the, 
honesty that doesn't sting. You know, nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings, I don't think. Delivering that. Sometimes it's not for you to say, too. Like, sometimes it's just you got to leave it alone. But you know, deep down, like, you know, like, if it's something that you have to say because it's a good friend or something. I'm going to be the guy. <laughs> I'm always the one that they tap. Like, DJ, can you tell them that they need to shave? Or, I don't know. I'm not like that. But that was a situation once. Someone asked me, like, this guy's not wearing deodorant. And he's not taking care of himself. And can, can he shave? And I was like, all right. I guess I will have the conversation. Where I just make sure that everything's okay with them. And... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's part of being a dad vibe, I guess. It's uncomfortable, but necessary sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> well, this one's looking pretty good. I'm going to jump off the stream. It's been going for about two hours now. I'm going to go... Uh, work on some other things that I got to do and then I will see you guys on Friday at 8.30 a.m. Friday, 8.30 a.m. Right back here for some more comics and coffee and streams of consciousness. I hope you have a good day and um, share the comics share the um, friendship and uh, keep the vibe keep the vibe strong out there guys I'll see you soon stun a friend today call up a friend you haven't talked to in a while let them know you 